All right, so let's now get down to the nitty-gritty details of what partial fraction decomposition is about. So what is it? Partial fraction decomposition is a method for writing a complicated rational function as a sum of simpler rational functions. That's the spirit, but how do we do it? Well, before we define what the method is, let me first define a few terms to make sure we're on the same page. So first, a rational function f of x is a ratio of polynomials. That's what rational function means. Now we're going to distinguish between two types of rational functions. We say a rational function is proper if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, and we say it's improper otherwise, so if the degree of the polynomial and the numerator is greater or equal than the degree of the denominator. But it turns out that the proper and improper rational functions are closely related. So what you can do, if you're given an arbitrary rational function, you can always divide, and suppose that it's improper, you can always divide the numerator by the denominator using long division for polynomials, and then you can rewrite it as a sum of a polynomial and a new rational function, which is proper. Right? So this is, if you don't remember how long division works for polynomials, we'll do some examples in class. But the key here is that long division can always be used to rewrite an improper rational function as a sum of a polynomial and a proper rational function. So in practice, we only care about proper rational functions, because polynomials we know how to integrate. So in terms of integrating rational functions, we really only care about integrating proper rational functions. OK, so we'll do some examples of that in class. But now let's uh, define what partial fraction decomposition is about. So here's the method. Suppose that you start with an arbitrary proper rational function, so the numerator here has degree less than the denominator. To find its partial fraction decomposition, we proceed in three steps. First, what we'll do is factor the denominator. So the denominator, remember, is a polynomial. It turns out you can always factor it into a product of linear factors, so things like ax plus b, and irreducible quadratic factors. Now, what does it mean for a quadratic factor to be reducible? It means that the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, is less than 0. So what does this means is that the quadratic factor has no real root, because in the quadratic formula, what happens is that what's in the square root becomes negative. So there's no real root. And it turns out that there's a very fundamental result, which is called the fundamental theorem, now not of calculus, but of algebra. So the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that it's always possible, so an arbitrary polynomial can always be factored into a product of linear factors and irreducible quadratic factors. So step one can always be done for arbitrary polynomials q of x. All right, the second step is the key. The second step is to write down the partial fraction decomposition. Now there's a method for doing that. We'll come back to it in a few slides. So you want to write down the partial fraction decomposition for your rational functions in terms of a bunch of unknowns. And then step three to solve is to solve for the unknowns to figure out what the decomposition really is. OK, so let me work through the example that we had in the previous uh, video, and then we'll define step two more carefully. OK, first step here is to factor the denominator. So in this case, it's easy. x squared minus 16 is equal to the product of x minus 4 times x plus 4. So this was step one. Now step two is to write down the partial fraction decomposition in terms of unknowns. Now here I haven't told you how to write down the partial fraction decomposition. We'll see that in the next slide. But let me just write it down so that I can proceed as my first example. So in this case, the partial fraction decomposition will be a sum of two terms, one for each linear factor in the denominator, and I have two unknowns, a and b, which are the numerators here. So that's what step two is about. You just write the partial fraction decomposition in terms of a certain number of unknowns. Now step three is to solve for the unknowns. So you want this to be equal to this, right? So a and b are not arbitrary constants. You, want, you, you, you need to fix them so that the two things are equal. And the way to do it is to put everything on a common denominator. So in this case, I get a times x plus 4 plus b times x minus 4 over x minus 4 times x plus 4. And I want this to be equal to this. Now, the only way this can be true for arbitrary x is if the numerators are equal. So I end up with the equality that 1 is equal to, let me just rearrange the terms here in the numerator in terms of powers of x. So I get x times a plus b plus 
4 times a minus b. I want these two things to be equal for all x, right? They have to be equal, identically equal as polynomials. So the power is whenever you have two polynomials that must be equal for all x, that means that each, uh, the, 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 each term, each monomial must be, the coefficients of each powers of x must be exactly equal. So on the left-hand side here, I only have a constant term. I could rewrite that as 0 times x plus 1 if I wanted, just to make it explicit what the equalities should be. On the right-hand side, I have a plus b times x plus 4 times a minus b. And because the two polynomials must be equal, this must be equal to this, and this must be equal to this. So I end up with a system of equations two equations. First one is that 0 is equal to a plus b. Second one is that 1 is equal to 4 times a minus b. System of two equations for two unknowns I can solve. First one tells me that a is equal to minus b. I can substitute and the second one I get that 1 is equal to 4 times minus b minus b, which is the same as saying that 1 is equal to minus 8b, or in other words, b is equal to minus 1 over 8. And then if I substitute back here, I get that a is equal to 1 over 8. So the final result here would be that the partial fraction decomposition, let me write it down here, is going to be this, but for the specific choice of unknowns that we solved here for. And a is equal to 1 over 8, so I get 1 over 8 times 1 over x minus 4, b is minus 1 over 8, so minus 1 over x plus 4, which is exactly the magic, the little rabbit that uh, I took out of my hat in the previous video. So that's the method for finding this. You first factor the denominator, second you write down the partial fraction decomposition in terms of a certain number of unknowns, and then you solve for the unknowns by putting everything on a common denominator. Now the key step here is step two. You need to know what the partial fraction decomposition is. So let me tell you how that works. There's really three cases to look at in some detail. First case is whenever you have a linear factor in the den denominator. So that's the case that we had before. So whenever there's a linear factor, then we add a term of the form a over the linear factor for some unknown a. For example, if I have this fraction and I want to write down the partial fraction decomposition, I'll have three terms, one for each linear factor. So I get, I'm going to get a over x minus 1 plus b. Now the unknowns must all be different because I'm going to solve for those, plus c over x plus 2. That would be the step two. That would be the partial fraction decomposition. And then I would solve in step three for the unknowns by putting everything on a common denominator, getting a system of equations, and then solving for the unknowns. All right, so that's the case when you have linear factors. Now, what about when you have irreducible quadratic factors? Now, for any irreducible quadratic factor in the denominator, we add a term of this form. So now the numerator is itself a linear factor with two unknowns. So if I take this example here, I'm going to have two terms, one for the linear factor, so that's the previous case, get a term like that, and then another term for the irreducible, so you could check that this is indeed irreducible quadratic factor, right? If I calculate b squared minus 4ac here, I get 1 minus 4, which is less than 0, so this is irreducible. It's great if it's not irreducible, then you need to write it down as a product of two linear factors. So it's important that you uh, check whether it's irreducible. All right, so now we have an irreducible factor. So I'm going to write bx plus c over my factor. I have three unknowns, and then I could solve by putting everything on a common denominator. Okay, and there's one last case, which is when you have repeated factors in the denominator. So if you have a factor which comes with some exponent in the denominator, then you have to add, so if the exponent is m, you have to add m terms in the uh, partial fraction decomposition, each of which will involve powers between 1 and m of the factor. So here's a complicated case. 
have three factors in the denominator. One which is not repeated, just standard linear factor, so I just get one term for this one. And this one is just linear, but it's got exponent twice, exponent 2. So I need to get two terms. One will have exponent 1, like this, and the second one will have exponent 2. Note that I need to have different unknowns here for the numerators. And the last term, this is an irreducible quadratic factor, you can check that, and it comes with exponent 3, so I need three terms for this one. So I'll get dx plus e. First term will have power 1. Second term, fx plus g, will have power 2. And the third term, hx plus little i, will have power 3. And that would be my partial fraction decomposition here. Again, to solve for the unknowns, I would put everything on a common denominator. Solve for the unknowns, that would be pretty messy. That would give me a system of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 equations for 9 unknowns. Not so easy to solve, but that's what it is. All right, so let me just summarize what the method is about. Partial fraction decomposition is the following three-step method. You first factor the denominators, the, sorry, the denominator into a product of linear factors and irreducible quadratic factors. You can always do that. This is guaranteed by the fundamental theorem of algebra. You just need to do it. Second step is to write down the partial fraction decomposition. Now in the last three slides, we've seen how to do it for arbitrary denominators. So you just write it down in, in terms of a bunch of unknowns. And the third step is to solve for the unknowns by putting everything on a common denominator.